This is the video that everybody's been waiting for. I apologize, YouTube. I had to let the amateurs come out with their jump shot videos. Now it's time for the pros. So I've been practicing a lot, learning all I can about NBA 2K19 shooting. My guys at NBA 2K Lab hit me up, and yo, when I tell you the information they got will change the game, I'm not playing around. If you guys are new to the channel, I've been making jump shots. I've been a sharpshooter since 2K17. The greatest feeling in 2K is crafting the perfect jump shot. So when you hit your full court green light and the park goes crazy with the whole crowd on the sidelines, I know I created that. So that's my plan for 2K19. I have a lot of stuff coming. If you guys are new and you don't subscribe, honestly, you're missing out. It's on you. <clears throat> All right, so let's get into it. So first things first, I'm gonna say a lot this video, but don't let me complicate things for you. At the end of the day, shooting is very simple. You just have to hit it in the green window to give yourself the best chance of making the shot. Oh, I see you sky high looking for those. Green oh, light. No. Oh, that's what I do, baby. That's, I was born to do that. I was, God, I was born to click square and green that. The first thing you'll notice when you hop in 2K19 is they added some new jump shots like Ben Simmons and Giannis Antetokounmpo. They've also tweaked the look of some other jump shots like Klay Thompson, which looks different than it did last year. There's different types of jump shots for different types of play styles. In my tests, I've been trying to use different kinds just to see what works. So far, I've been maining my six foot five playmaking primary, sharpshooting secondary, which means if you're six foot four and under, you can get the very quick releases in the jump shot creator. And even though I can release very quick, I've been testing out some quick releases just because I know everybody watching the videos isn't gonna be six foot four and under. I've been making some sacrifices, ladies and gentlemen. Although it's very refreshing to have access to very quick releases, Jesus, it changes everything. All right, take a look at our handy dandy diagram of a shot meter. Your job as a shooter is to hit the exact middle. That's called the green window. Once you hit that, you give yourself the best chance of making the shot. Now, I'm gonna tell you guys right now, a lot of the best shooters that I know, including myself, don't like to look at the shot meter when they shoot. I know some that do. It all depends on your style. I got comfortable looking at my player. The way that I design my jump shot, I give myself an easy cue to let me know when to release the ball. So instead of staring at the shot meter and waiting till it gets to the top because there's always margin for error there, unless you're like a pure sharp shooter, catch and shoot, corner specialist, and all those badges, Hall of Fame light up, it's not gonna be an easy shot. You have to actually time it. For example, when I'm using base 11, it's a very linear base where it's quick, it goes up in the second he reaches the pinnacle of his jump shot. If I use Kyrie as a release one and the release two, I can let go of it and get a green every single time. So you start with the base that's good. The base is what decides everything. The speed of the jump shot, how high it gets off the ground, it decides the green window. Basically, if you have a bad base, my guy, you're not hitting any shot. Once you have a good base like base 49 or base 11, you have to work on creating a release one and a release two that can give you an easy cue to release the ball. And that's what I do basically. And I make tweaks. Maybe something doesn't work out, or high latency like this or low latency like like that. I make enough adjustments so that when I'm on the court, I don't have to worry about all that. I just have to worry about hitting my cue. So my guys at NBA 2K Lab hit me up and gave me the Discord tech. Let's get into it. What they told me will literally change the landscape of shooting. And uh, if you have a pure sharp or a pure stretch big, my guy, you're in luck. So a couple videos back, I explained in NBA 2K19, it is possible to get a perfect release on 100% of the shots that land in the green window. Now you might be like, Agent, if you hit the green window, isn't it a perfect release? No, in previous years, it wasn't. In previous years, if you hit that green window, you gave yourself a 60% chance of getting a perfect release. Of course, that depends on all the factors we talked about, like your attribute, your badges, your archetype, all of that. So the other 40%, you were shooting an all white release. And then maybe half of that time you were missing. So 20% of the perfect releases you had, you were missing. And because Mike Wang and the devs have been saying that they were planning to add a skills gap to shooting this year, they wanted to remedy that. And the way that they remedied that is by doing this. In NBA 2K19, if you have an 86 open shot three or higher, you can hit the small six to eight millisecond window where 100% of the shots you take green light. Now you might be thinking, Agent, how, how could a human being ever possibly hit a six to eight millisecond window consistently? We're not robots and we don't have modded controllers. That's a really good point that you make. I brought up that point too when my guys at 2K Lab told me that. Hey, good thing it's not real life because in NBA 2K, you can create jump shots that help you snap to the green window. Did you just hear what I heard? If you craft the right jump shot, you can snap yourself into the green window where 100% of the time it hits. 
you have to have an 86 open shot three. Now, NBA 2K Lab did some tests on other jump shots and they found that there are some jump shots where you have to get as high as an 89 open shot three to get that same window. So obviously, you wanna ditch those jump shots and go for the jump shots that allow you to do it at 86. Unless, of course, you're like a pure sharp and you have like 95, in which case it doesn't really matter. Actually, it does matter. You would want the bigger window anyway, all right? So just think about the implications of what I just said. If you're closing me out and you have a minimum wingspan, even if you're in my face, if I have a jump shot that gets high off the ground, that's a quick release and I hit that small window, you're gonna see more contested shots dropping from pure sharps and stretches this year. Wow, ladies and gentlemen, did you hear that? So this year more than any other, your jump shot matters. Now I'm not sure, and I literally just asked NBA 2K Lab if you can use the plus five boost at the kiosk to get yourself up to an 86 if you have like an 81 open shot three. Cause if that's the case, that means play shooters that are like six foot three with minimum wingspans can hit that window. Did you hear what I said? Play shooters can, I'm gonna be honest, there's been a debate going on on Twitter talking about shot contests in NBA 2K. This year you have to manually put up your hand using the right stick, you can't just walk into somebody and expect your hand to go up. And if your hand doesn't go up, it literally does not count as a contest, which I like. I don't mind manual contests, I think that adds a skills gap, you have to put your hand up. But if you do put your hand up, and people are still hitting in your eye, especially the purists, it's gonna be a problem. Now, some people are saying, no, you just have to find a way to adjust, you're always complaining, don't make any changes, the game is perfect. And I'm just like, listen, the second these pure sharps and stretches find those jump shots that help them snap, it's over for the rest of you. I was playing games on the park yesterday, and I was playing with a, a, a glass cleaner primary, and he was murking it on the board, and we were, we were defeating this team that had these stretch bigs. But I played against teams with stretch bigs where they were just juking around the guy that had the ball on the check, and they eventually got open, and they were hitting it in my eye. <sighs> That's gonna happen a lot this year if you know what you're doing. I'm telling you right now, it is gonna be difficult to adjust, but if you stare at your jump shot meter when you're shooting the ball, stop doing that. Start looking at your player. You know how small that jump shot meter is on your screen, the one that you're staring at? And on top of that, you have to hit an even smaller green window in that small ass, how could you even tell? It's, such a, it's like a pixel. So when you stare at your player when he's going up for the jump shot, as long as you have a cue that's straight, you're set. So I've been in the park and I've been testing a lot of jump shots and I don't wanna come out with nothing mediocre. I'm gonna need another day, I might come out with that jump shot video tomorrow. Cause right Right now, I have an A2 release. And you know me, last year only three jump shots ever made A1 status. I'm not about to make a mistake and classify one as A1. Oh, yeah, here we go. Green, oh Green. man. Oh. I'm just, oh. I'm just Sorry, up to bro. something over here, man. A lot of YouTubers find a jump shot that's like, it's I, maybe it's above average, and then they'll drop a video like it's the best jump shot on earth. And I'm like, yo, it's not. How, how, how on earth could you have possibly found the best jump shot in the entire game in what? Two days, my guy? You found it in two days, you're that good. Shit. Here's what I'll tell you though. The first jump shot to ever reach A1 status for me in NBA 2K17, base 49, Curry release one, Curry release two. That jump shot is the best jump shot in the game. Now I didn't need to do any insane testing and tweaking to know that, cause it was the best jump shot in 2K17. Now there is a caveat, I can't use that jump shot cause it only works in low latency and I always work in high latency. Even though I have a whole gigabyte download on my internet, I always deal with high latency when I'm playing 2K. If you have low latency on NBA 2K19, ladies and gentlemen, base 49, Curry release one, Curry release two, is the greatest jump shot in the game. If you're familiar with base 49, cause it takes some time to adjust to, you're gonna murder everybody. It is for me the easiest jump shot to time cause it has an obvious cue. This is how I kind of see it. In my mind, I'm a rhythm shooter, so I see it like this. It's a motion. It starts, it starts here, he goes back and then forward. So it starts here, boom. Boom, the second he reaches that little U shape, that sideways U, is when you release the ball. You're just gonna hit everything. I don't even know. He has oh. a bad record in Hawaii. Bye bye. Oh, come on, man. You can't, you can't do that. Now, I have come across some decent, above average A3, A2 jump shots that are high latency, but I, need, I can't come out here and tell you guys about a weak ass jump shot, so I gotta do some more testing. Ladies and gentlemen, Hopefully that video drops tomorrow. If you are a pure sharp or a pure stretch, you are currently celebrating because uh, if you weren't already overpowered, 
You just got another buff, my guy. I do have a Pierce Sharp for anybody wondering. I just haven't grinded the badges yet. A little 6'5 Pierce Sharp who's an 85 overall. For those wondering, my 2K18 jump shots also do really well in NBA 2K19, but nothing compares to the 2K17 jump shot I just talked about. I'll find a jump shot for the high latency people because that's probably most of us considering the 2K servers. If you guys are new to the channel, drop a like and subscribe. Do all of that good stuff. Click on one of these two videos here. Follow my Instagram. I've been posting on there more consistently. If you don't follow me on there, I'm going to be really angry at you. All right? And I like you. I don't want to get angry at you. I'm going to catch you guys later. I'm out. Peace.